see how it works. All right, welcome back to Green Lizard USA. My name is William, I'm glad you're back. I mentioned in one of my previous videos that I couldn't actually stop my Predator engine. It just kept running and running and I couldn't figure out how to stop it. It's because I had a wiring issue. So I called my dad, he came over and drew this beautiful schematic that I'm gonna to talk to you all about. All right, so when you look at this diagram, maybe it means something to you. But for me, I look at this and I kind of scratch my head and I'm not really sure what it means. And I'd rather look at something in 3D. So to help you out, you can look at the diagram, but you can also look at the real life component. So let's start here at the flywheel. The flywheel is a simple uh, metal casting that's attached to the engine block and it has a magnet on it. So that flywheel rotates, the magnet passes the coil and it generates a spark. The next component is over here on the right hand side is the starter. So this M represents the starter motor and this little uh, dotted region represents the solenoid which gets the signal from the ignition assembly. This is the ignition assembly, and it's represented here by the large dotted region up top. And you have three positions. You have a off, a run, and a start position. And just like up here, you have an off, a run, and a start. And you also see that you have one, two, three, four, mess that up, I missed one. All right, so up here at the top, where did I start with that? All right, so up here at the top, you have the ignition assembly just like I have right here in my hand. And the ignition assembly has three positions, an off, a run, and a start position, just like you can see right here, off, run, and start. And you have a total of five wires, one, two, three, four, five, just like you have coming out of the bottom, one, two, three, four, and five. And the very last component is what I'm calling a generator or it's another coil, but it's, it's a generator that's actually mounted inside of the flywheel. So the new flywheel has a magnet on the outside, just like the stock one, but it also has a magnet on the inside, which then generates a charge or an electromagnetic field when the flywheel spins, that then allows you to power other components like a radio or maybe some running lights or fishing lights. So those are all the components, and I hope that's a little helpful to see the the 3D object on the 2D display. And here's each of the parts that I just showed you up on the board. And here's a close up of the starter motor with the solenoid on the side. And again, a close up of the ignition assembly with the three positions. All right, so now I wanna walk through basically how this whole diagram works. So the most important part is your power source. In this case, it's a battery represented by this symbol, and that's a 12 volt marine battery. And up here, you have your ignition assembly. So you have an off, a run, and a start position. So the way this starts is you literally put the key in, turn it to the start position, and you close the circuit. And it allows power to run from the battery all the way through that wiring and down to the starter relay solenoid, which then completes a circuit and allows power to come through the motor and start spinning the motor, which turns this gear and then engages with the gears on the flywheel. Basically like that. Flywheel starts spinning, round and around, and that magnet continues to pass the coil, generates a magnetic field right here in this process, which then provides power or spark to the spark plug. And once that spark starts going, every time that magnet passes the coil, it creates a spark, and the engine continues to run. And the engine will run as long as you let it, or as long as it has gas, and it doesn't need the battery at that point. It's just the flywheel creating the, the um, power source, which then sparks the spark plug. All right, so you've just started the engine, and when you let go of that key, it lands in the run position, which really keeps the, the off and the start circuits in an open position. So the issue I had with my motors when I wired them improperly was I didn't have a good path to ground. I could not turn it off with the key. So I had done something wrong and I don't know what I did, but I've since fixed it. So when you turn that key from the home or run position to off, you close a circuit, which allows power to bypass the coil and go straight to ground. 
and when you take power to ground, it stops the engine. So how does that stop the engine? Basically, while this flywheel is generating power through the coil, which keeps this spark going, when you close this circuit, when that flywheel is trying to give power to the spark plug, it actually bypasses that circuit and runs all the way to ground. So we know we can turn off the engine by putting the key in the off position, which takes the power to ground, but there's another way the engine can turn itself off in case of an emergency. In this case, it's a low oil sensor. And you can deinstall these if you want to, but it's a good fail safe. If the engine senses the oil is low, there's actually another way the engine can cut off. Uh, the sensor talks to this little black box component. It's really, I'm not really sure what's inside of it, but basically if there's low oil, there's a little uh, sensor effectively that tells a component here to allow power to go to ground. All right, so the last piece you get with these kits is what I'm calling a generator. It's this little copper wrapped magnetic coil assembly that's mounted inside of that flywheel. Again, the, the new flywheel you get not only has a magnet on the outside, like the existing one, you have magnets on the inside. So as that flywheel spins, you create a charge, and I measured about 18 volts when I did it. But anyway, you generate a charge, which can then power other things. So you actually don't need to attach this wire to the white wire that comes out of the ignition assembly. It, it actually does nothing for you to connect those wires together. But what you can do is you can use that voltage for uh, running lights or navigation lights, uh, maybe, maybe fishing lights if you like to do bow fishing or maybe a small radio. Uh, it's kind of a cool feature. It doesn't have anything really to do with the, the electric start component, but it's just a piece you get and you can use it for whatever you want. All right, so I mentioned that that little cord coming off of the generator does nothing with the switch. It could have if the manufacturers of this product actually put a light bulb and a circuit protector in the switch, but it literally does nothing. I'll actually show you. So if you want to look here on the back, there's just one Phillips bolt or screw that goes in there. And if you look inside, hey, look at that. There's the back of that circuit protector, which sort of feels like a button, but there is literally nothing going to it. There's no power. So this little wire, the white one, could have brought power to a light bulb or a little circuit protector, but for whatever reason, that wasn't installed. So just know that when you're pushing on this and you feel like it's doing something, it's not. So here's what the finished product looks like once you have it installed. You can see the ignition assembly, the starter, obviously the flywheel is back behind that cover at this point, and all those wires we just talked about. And since I have two of these in my boat, you can also see what it looks like when you have deinstalled everything so that you're ready to install the kit. So that's it. Now we'll give this thing a quick start and you can see how it works. So what we just showed you with the electric start on the Predator water pump, it's something that you can easily apply and use for your push lawnmower, your riding lawnmower, weed whacker, trimmer, what have you. Uh, it's a pretty, pretty basic concept. So we talked about that uh, flywheel. When I pull this cord on the mower, it is physically turning the flywheel, which has that magnet, and then generates the power, which then sends voltage down this line and creates a spark, which you would see right here between the gap of this little guy and that little tiny thing underneath that's coated by ceramic. So we'll go outside and we will show you what it looks like to actually create the spark. So now you can see the little flash of light as I pull the ripcord and that's it. So hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like and subscribe.